Shalom, brothers and sisters. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from Yahuwah the Father and Yahusha the Messiah, his son. This is Brother David coming to you to bring you the laws, statutes, judgments, and commandments of Yahuwah. And we're at Deuteronomy chapter 6. Did you see what happened in chapter 5? Now do you understand why the Father told me to give you these commandments and to teach you them? It's not what you thought it was, was it? Out of those 10, which are the basic commandments, if you do these 10, you will do well. You will see that our brothers and sisters are not carrying out any. This is what I base my life on. Those 10 commandments to see whether or not I am keeping them. And then afterwards, you go off and to try to apply to yourself all of the rest of the laws, the judgments, the statutes, and the testimonies. We have to do that, brothers and sisters. Let me tell you why it is so imperative that we do this now. And I'm telling you the truth. My father commanded me to do this. This is a lot of work. Besides my regular work, my business that I have to carry, besides the other videos that I am creating, the father told me to teach you these laws, statutes, judgments, and commandments, and to explain them to you. Do you know why? 2019 is 400 years. Mohammed bin Salman has been wearing out the saints for almost three and a half years. H.R. 1242, the government of the United States has identified that the children of Israel or the African Americans, as they call us, have been here in bondage for 400 years and they want to make a celebration. If you look around, every single thing in Matthew chapter 24 has come to pass. Look at the person who is leading this country. He is destroying it. They are starting to see something that they have never seen before. And I said this back when he first came in that the father sent him to tear this place down. And he's doing exactly what the father showed me that he would do. Brothers and sisters, this is about preparation for the kingdom. If you noticed in the last, the first part, Deuteronomy chapter 5, everything that he said was for them to go into the land to possess it. They had to be prepared first, didn't they? They had to learn his ways first, didn't they? And remember what happened because they decided to go the opposite direction, that they had to wander in the wilderness for 40 years till all of those who were disobedient died. It's not going to happen like that this time. When the Father comes and gets us, he's going to gather all of us, I believe, and he's going to take us all to the wilderness, and there he's going to plead with us. What end shall it be for you? Will you be one of those who will be weeping and gnashing of teeth? Or will you be one of those who would be excited and joyous to see your master come in the clouds and gather you and bring you back into the promised land? The first step is learn these commandments. Hear it and do it. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 1 to 3. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, the judgments, which Yahuwah, your mighty one, commanded to teach you, that ye might do them in the land whither ye go to possess it. Listen to this. 
The Father told me to teach you this, to prepare you for his kingdom so that you can possess the land. You cannot be a lawless person when you enter in. You must already know how to be obedient. He is not going for rebels, brothers and sisters. Rebels will be destroyed. Verse 2. That thou mightest fear Yahuwah, thy mighty one, to keep all his statutes, his commandments, which I command thee, thou and thy son, and thy son's sons all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. This is a statute. Verse 3. Hear therefore, O Israel. Who is he talking to? He's talking to you. If you made it this far, he's ready to exalt you and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee. And that ye may increase mightily as Yahuwah, the mighty one of the fathers, have promised thee. The promises are only for the children of Israel. And remember something. We've already experienced the curses. Nobody else can claim that. To identify the children of Israel, all you have to do is look at the curses, then look at us. In the land that floweth with milk and honey. Even then they were prepared before they came into the land. The father says he's going to stretch forth his hand a second time to redeem, to recover that remnant of Yazrael that shall be left in the last days. To bring us back into the promised land, brothers and sisters. That is us. Let me clarify this us. One of the brothers pointed it out that maybe people don't understand what I'm trying to say here. When I say us, I'm not just talking about African Americans. Not just talking about the Jamaicans. Not just talking about the Haitians, we're talking about all of the children of Israel that were taken around the ship, around the world in ships. We're also talking about the northern kingdom that totally disappeared thousands of years ago and have integrated themselves into other societies. Those who have come back to him, remember, there is 12 thousand from each tribe that shall come back to him in these last days. Verse 4. Hear, O Israel. Who is he talking to again? The children of Israel. Yahuwah, our mighty one, is one Yahuwah. And this is the Shema. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. You should read this at all of your feasts. Why is he telling us that he is one? Because he knew down through the centuries that there would be a people who would come who try to make him a triune God or God in three persons. Yahuwah is telling you here that he is one and only one. Verse 5. And thou shalt love Yahuwah thy mighty one with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. Do you know what that makes you if you're a man and you love him like this? Do you know what that makes you, brothers and sisters? You are his possession. Listen to me. I have no problem with being a possession of Yahuwah. I have no problem with being his servant. I can even go as far as to say this. I have no problem with being his slave. For he has done great things for me. 
verse 6. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. This is a statue. Verse 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. You teach your children diligently how to get up in the morning and make up their beds. You teach them diligently to brush their teeth. You teach them diligently to go to school. You teach them diligently when they come home that they're not able to go out to play or watch any television until they finish their homework. You diligently teach them the ways of the world. But what happened to the ways of Yahuwah? Do you diligently teach your children his ways? And shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Hey, this is what I do. For a short while, I thought that maybe something was wrong with me because people, you know, they kind of look down on this when you only speak about the mighty one. I never speak about any sports. I don't want to get into their gossip conversations. So I'm ostracized. I'm cut off from the rest of the people, and that's fine with me. But this is the way that you must carry yourself. When you're sitting in your house, speak about Yahuwah. When you're walking in the streets, speak about Yahuwah. Before you lie down, speak about him. When you rise up, speak of him. Verse 8. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand. That book should be in your hands. You should be learning them at all times. And they shall be as frontless between thine eyes. You have to learn them. And you have to do them. They have to become a part of you. They have to be in your mind, in your database. Verse 9. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. Now, there's a thing called a mezuzah that the Jews use when they stick it on the post of their doors. Most of them that I've observed have a star of Moloch and Chion. Don't buy that. You will do well if you just get a plaque with the Ten Commandments and put them at your front door. And if you have gates, put one by your gates. And you do well. And if you can find one that has the Shema, and then it has verse 5 also, you're even doing better. Verse 10. And it shall be, when Yahuwah thy mighty one shall have brought thee into the land, which he sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities, which thou buildest not. Do you see what we're going to get? All you have to do is learn these laws, statutes, commandments, judgments, and apply them. Look what you get. Goodly cities. You didn't have to build them. The stranger is going to do that for you. Verse 11, and houses full of all good things. Wow. I live very well, even today, in this world. My house is beautiful. Everyone who comes here says the same thing. Say, wow, this looks like a museum or something. Inside and outside. What we have here in this life is Nothing compared to what the Father is going to give to us. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard of the things that the Father has prepared for those who love him. Who loves him? Those who keep his commandments. And houses full of all good things which thou filts not. You didn't fill it. It was given to you. And wells digged which thou 
diggest not the stranger, your servants, they're going to do it for you. Vineyards and olive trees, which thou plantest not, all of the goodly trees that's on your land, you won't have to plant them or cultivate them. There will be those who will come that will be proud to be your servant, brothers and sisters. That's how great this movement is going to be when our Messiah return. When thou shall have eaten and be full, look at verse 12, then beware, lest thou forget Yahuwah, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Do you see that? Egypt means the house of bondage. Don't ever forget where he's brought you from. If you ever want to gauge your progress, look back on where you came from and see where you are today. If you're in the same place, you're not doing well. You have to be constantly progressing, learning, and applying this word. Verse 13. Thou shalt fear Yahuwah thy mighty one and serve him and swear by his name. Listen. Remember the church taught us that we are not supposed to swear? <laughs> I think even our parents probably taught us you're not supposed to swear. Where did they get that from? They got it from the church. Why? The church didn't want you to see this. You are supposed to swear by his name if you're telling the truth. For example, when you get into the land and your brother has mango trees and you and he accused you of going and stealing a basket of his mangoes and you turn to him and you say, I swear by the name of Yahuwah that I did not take your mangoes. The case is closed. But if you did take those mangoes, Brothers and sisters, look for judgment to fall upon you. Verse 14, ye shall not go after other gods of the gods of the people which are around about you. After we've gotten through this, brothers and sisters, <laughs> I don't think we're going after any other gods. America. And all of the captivities around the world has taught us one thing. There's nothing here for us. Everything that we need is in the kingdom with our mighty one. Verse 15. For Yahuwah thy mighty one is a jealous mighty one among you. He's going to be amongst us. Lest the anger of Yahuwah, thy mighty one, be kindled against thee and destroy thee off the face of the earth. Get yourself together. Put away those images. Don't listen to anyone who is presenting images before you and telling you that this is the true image of your master. These people do not love Yahuwah. They hate him. You have to remember that. If you want to make it into the kingdom, you have to come out of those camps. He's not looking for someone who is, has the herd mentality. He's looking for independent contractors. Those who seek him with all their heart, mind, and soul on their own. They don't have to follow some guy, some bishop, who is dictating to you how to carry yourself. All of these things you can learn on your own. Verse 16. Ye shall not tempt Yahuwah, your mighty one, as ye tempted him in Massa. We'll get back to that. Verse 17, ye shall diligently keep the commandments of Yahuwah, your mighty one. Don't let down your guards, brothers and sisters, and his testimonies 
and his statues, which he have commanded thee. Verse 18. And thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of Yahuwah. Do you know something? If you have the Holy Spirit and you're about to enter into something that is against Yahuwah, I'm going to tell you, you're going to be uneasy. You will not be able to do it. You won't be able to carry that out if you have the Spirit. That it may be well with thee. If you do what he says, you won't have any problems. And that thou mayest go in and possess the good land which Yahuwah swear unto thy fathers. This promise is connected to an action. Obedience is the action. Verse 19. To cast out all thine enemies from before thee. As Yahuwah have spoken, all of your enemies shall be destroyed. When our Messiah, Yahusha, returns, the first step is to go into the kingdom and cleanse the land. Then he's going to come back and gather us and bring us back into the wilderness where he shall plead with us. It's going to be good for those who keep the commandments and for those who have not, there shall be judgment. KJV Dictionary Definition. The word is tempt. Remember I told you we will get back to that. Thou shall not tempt Yahuwah thy mighty one as you tempted him in Massa. To incite or solicit to an evil act. To entice to something wrong by presenting arguments that are plausible or convincing or by the offer of some pleasure, of apparent advantage as the inducement. What did the Israelites do? They were in the wilderness. They were thirsty. They came to Moses and said, give us water to drink. Then they presented an argument. They accused Yahuwah of bringing them out of Egypt into the wilderness to kill them. Now, if I was Yahuwah, I would have wiped them out right then and there. Brothers and sisters, praise the mighty one that I am not Yahuwah. Because we wouldn't have made it this long. <laughs> I would have utterly destroyed the Israelites because of their stiff neck and unruly behavior. So do not tempt the mighty one. Don't blame him for your circumstances. You are to praise, glorify, and worship him, no matter what circumstance you're in. James chapter 1 says, Count it all joy when you uh, are faced with trials of many kinds. For the testing of your faith breeds perseverance. Perseverance must finish its perfect work so that you may become mature and complete, not lacking anything. He's testing your faith, brothers and sisters. You have to exercise that faith so that you can become mature. Verse 20. And when thy son asketh thee in time to come, saying, What mean the testimonies and the statues and the judgments? which Yahuwah, our mighty one, have commanded you. Look at the testimony. Verse 21. Then thou shalt say unto thy son, We were Pharaoh's bondmen in Egypt. We were Donald Trump's bondmen in America, the house of bondage. And Yahuwah brought us out of the house of bondage with a mighty hand. Verse 22. And Yahuwah showed signs and wonders great and sore upon the house of bondage, upon Pharaoh, and upon all his household before our eyes. You will see it. You will observe it. 
It would be documentation for the kingdom for what the mighty one done did when he brought you out of the house of bondage. That is your testimony. Even in the kingdom, we shall make songs about this captivity. Verse 23. And he brought us out from thence, that he might bring us in to give us the land which he swear unto our fathers. Listen, we serve the mighty one that cannot lie. Verse 24. And Yahuwah commanded us to do all these statues to fear Yahuwah, our mighty one, for our good always never lose your reverence and your respect of him that he might preserve us alive as it is at this day without him we shall be devoured as you have noticed every kingdom on this planet has come together in a confederate against us if it were not for him preserving for himself a remnant all of us would be wiped out. Verse 25. And it shall be our righteousness. If we observe to do all these commandments before Yahuwah, our mighty one, as he hath commanded us. Hmm. The definition of righteousness is keeping, observing, learning, doing his commandments. So anytime you hear that this man is righteous, ask yourself, is he keeping the father's commandments? You should be able to see it. I'm going to tell you a little story while we're here. I have two minutes before it's 30 minutes for this video. <laughs> when I first met my wife, we were brought together by, uh, I don't know what you would call it, but a lady, an old lady who knew both of us, brought us together. We didn't know each other. And she told me, she says, I want you to get with this young lady here. I think you and her are perfect together. I didn't want nothing to do with any women. I had too many bad experiences. But when I went to meet her, something happened. We totally clicked together. When she got in my car, she heard worship music going forth. And that just turned her on. She was excited to hear that. And I looked at her strangely. I was like, wow, I've never had this before. And she told me a story. She said, I prayed that the mighty one would send me a righteous man. She didn't say mighty one. She said God, but still you understand. And I smiled. Years down the road, she said, if I had known that I had to do put up with all of this to be with a righteous man, I would have ran from you. Me and her, we just laugh and joke about this. But in all reality, she has been more secure than she's ever been in her whole life. She has been more happy than she's ever been in her whole life. She has been more stable and wealthy than she's been in her whole life. Why? Because she found a man that loves Yahuwah with all of his heart, all of his mind, all of his soul. Brothers, we want a good woman. The father's not going to give her to you. If you are not straight yourself, you have to have this word deep down in you, then you will know how to treat her. You will know how to discipline her when the time comes without hitting 
or being evil with your tongue. You have to be able to wash her with the water of the word. Are you able to do that, brothers? If you are not able to do that now, get yourself together. Just close yourself down. Stop watching football, basketball, and all these sports and study for the kingdom. Those sports have nothing to do with the kingdom or Yahuwah. They are a distraction to keep you from learning his ways. If you want to have a good marriage, learn the Father's commandments. Don't get with these heathens. And this is for women and men. Don't connect yourself with these heathen. You have to know that this person is not just speaking a good game, but he can prove it. All you have to do is ask him a few questions about the Bible. And you'll know who he is right off the top. Study these laws, brothers and sisters, for it is our righteousness. It is your power. Continue. To chapter 7. Shalom.